When I say my cup is overflowing, I don't mean I don't have problems. I don't have needs. I might be out of money, but my cup is overflowing. I might be in bad health, but my cup is overflowing. Jesus is never diminished. You can never get to the end of him. He's just always overflowing. I guess what I'm trying to say is the good in your life outweighs the bad. What I'm trying to say is you got more You got more blessings than you do burdens, so quit acting like the burdens are bigger. I just don't know why I did. You don't deserve the blessings. You don't deserve the good times, so don't whine about the bad. Just just rejoice in whatever place you're in because the cup is faithful. The cup will never leave you. The cup said, I'll give you power, and you're more than a conqueror. And the cup says, keep going because hell ain't in charge of the water supply. Heaven is. And he said, I won't leave you dry. I'm going to supply your needs. If you'll praise the Lord, I'll, I'll cut it five minutes short. But you got to praise the Lord. I tell you, here lately, I'm becoming my own favorite preacher. Amen. I'm just preaching today. It's just the truth. We got to get the right image of God. He is so good. He is so kind. He's overflowing with it. He's not mean and ugly and a monster. It's not who he is. He says, "I'll, I'll let my cup spill over on you. And it'll give you a future, and it'll forgive your past, and you'll start all over again. It'll restore your health. We've got to get to a point where we stop sipping the cup and start slurping. Are you a sipper or a slurper? Because when you understand you have an overflowing cup, you'll quit sipping and you'll start slurping. That if I want to be free, I can be free. If I want to never touch a drink or never do something again, that I want to, I can find it if I quit sipping. That's our problem. We got too many sippers in this church and not enough slurpers of the overflow of all of God's goodness and mercy that He wants to give us in every weak area of our life. I read that story of Samson and I was reminded of what his proverb was when he said, out of the eater will come the meat, come forth meat, and out of the strong will come forth sweet. And that was in a reference to the fact that he had, that he had slew a lion. The Bible said he tore his jaws apart. I like that. I mean, I mean he didn't leave it. He didn't, he didn't just put it down, but, but he made sure... What you did to me, nobody, you're going to never do that to anybody else again. You should have let me alone because I'm tearing your jaws apart. And the Bible said he left the line there and he went and fought a thousand Philistines and got weary and came back and was almost ready to thirst and die of exhaustion. And he looked in the carcass of the slain lion and he saw honey. And out of the... Out of the eater came meat or strength, nourishment, and out of the strongest attack in his life came sweet. Out of the strong came sweet. And that's a reference to honey. God can take your last trial that almost killed you, your worst trial that almost destroyed you and turn it into a resting place, a condo that you can go back to and receive meat and nourishment from the lions. In other words, I want to put it like this. After the lion comes the honey. After the lion comes the honey. And some of you have faced the lion, but after the lion comes the honey. God's not going to leave you there. God's not going to let you live there and just attack. But after the lion comes the honey. And I felt like saying it in the first service, and the Lord just kind of kicked it in to me, that some of you have faced the lion, and the Lord says after the lion, now expect the honey. God, if you're single, and you're believing for a mate, and if you don't want one, don't receive this. I, uh, you know, uh, some people are not open. But if you want one, then here's what you need to do. After the lion of divorce, after the lion, 
lion of pain, after the lion of anguish, after the lion of heartbreak comes the honey. And God's got a honey for you. And I hope you, when you find him, you treat him as sweet as honey or her. Well, that got a little stirring in here, didn't it? Listen to me. Hell's plan is to get you to do this, and I'm almost done. Get you to focus on what you don't have. That's what he did in the Garden of Eden. They, their cup was overflowing, and they got their eyes off of the cup that was overflowing. They could have everything in the garden, everything in there. And the enemy said, you can't have that fruit from that tree. And they got their eyes on what they couldn't or didn't have. And they overlooked the 99.9% that they did have. That's what the enemy does. I don't have this, Pastor. You're preaching my cup is overflowing. I don't have my family saved. I want to throw one word at you. Yet. But God's goodness and God's mercy, God's two watchdogs are following them wherever they go because it's spilling over. You've got an overflowing cup that doesn't just that doesn't just bless you, but when you made a decision to follow Jesus, it started spilling over to your children. Whether they got an umbrella up or not, it really doesn't matter. It's a matter of time before the, the rain reaches them. You say, well, pastor, I just got a lot of crud in my life. Stop slurping the crud and start enjoying the cup. There's, there's no crud that life has thrown on you that can destroy you if you keep slurping from the cup. Drink from the cup a blessing. Live on the level of overflowing blessing. Sip from the overflow and nothing will overcome you. Hell wants you to stare at the crud and forget about the cup that is overflowing with goodness and mercy and kindness from God. It frees you from people fear. It frees you from intimidation. It frees you from faith killers that tell you you can't do it and it's not going to happen and you'll never see it. I'm telling you your friends may go but the cup will stay. Your money may go, but the cup will stay. Your health may fade, but the cup will stay. And it's always overflowing. And the question is, and I'm preaching to people today at every one of our campuses, you're in one of these two categories. Sippers sit and stare. Slurpers shout and praise. Which one are you? Do you sit and stare or do you slurp? And shout in praise, my cup runneth over. <laughs>